Holy cow, what a day. So we started the actual construction of the foundation today. Hopefully you guys checked out the last video, which was all about the excavation and digging the poles. But man, this was a doozy just for planning and how it all works. You guys can see we have four level plumb posts sunk in the ground. They're concreted in, which is awesome. But holy cow, the process to get here was quite a lot. So what we're gonna do, is I want to actually walk you guys through this process um, both on the 3d plan and also out here in the field and kind of show you what we did because it took a lot of guesswork to kind of figure this out those of you guys who've watched the whole series you know that this is going to be an octagonal deck and so you've really got eight posts that all have to be level and plumb and that can produce some interesting challenges so let's go ahead and look here in the field at what we did and talk a little bit about that all right so here is the setup and you guys can see um, basically we've got four posts they're all sunk they're four by fours and we're ignoring those other sets of holes for now this was kind of the way that i designed this um, as you guys learned in the design video is these four posts kind of hold the majority of the weight and then those other four are kind of auxiliaries just to hold the edges of the building but here's the problem all four of these posts have to be level and plumb and they all also have to be equal distance from one another they're correct not equal but correct distance from one another and then this whole thing also has to be square and all of that produced some interesting challenges so what we ended up doing was we attached this post right back here and it doesn't matter that it's that one just one of the posts we sunk in the ground and concreted with some quick set concrete um, we actually used the fast setting kind so it's set in only 30 minutes and we made sure that it was perfectly vertical all right and we didn't have any of these other posts out at that point then what we did was we attached these little stringer boards, these two by fours here, from that main one over to these other two. And these two by fours are cut the exact right distance that the plan called for. And so we screwed those in and then basically that leaves us with a couple wobbly boards. These two are wobbly, right? Cause they, sorry, these two are wobbly, that one and that one are wobbly. And then we attached two more stringers from these two posts onto this fourth one. So basically what you end up with is you end up with one post that's concreted in and solid and then three posts that are all attached to one another, but they're wobbly, they're not super solid. So from there, it's basically a matter of getting this post next, this other corner post, because you can square things and you measure your diagonals and square things up. Once you've squared things and measured your diagonals, you concrete this post make sure it's level and then this one and then this one so if that wasn't super clear i want to take a look at the plan too i just wanted you guys to see where we're at right now let's go ahead and jump over to the plan and we'll look at it there the way that this design works is basically four posts are holding up the majority of the weight in the center of the observatory um, these are this post this post and then the two posts down below here let me move this out of the way so that you all can see that this one and this one. And for the purpose of this video, I think it's easiest if we probably label these one, two, three, and four. Now, my basic design principle is to spend as much time as possible leveling uh, post number one perfectly because we're basically gonna use post one as our uh, kind of reference point for the other three posts. So set up post one, it's just a post sitting out of the ground, dump some concrete in it, make sure it's perfectly level and make sure it's too long. We'll cut it to size when it comes time. What I did from there was I connected these four two by sixes here between my four posts. Now, at this point, only post one is actually concreted. After the concrete had set up, I attached these, these two by fours. These two by fours are just scrap. There's no, um, they're not gonna be there long-term. Their sole purpose is to hold the posts the correct distance away from one another. So I cut them the right distance, attach them all, cut them the right length, attach them all, and they're to hold the post the correct distance. Now, from here, I actually concreted post four next because post four holds the squareness of this whole layout so i basically took post four and i laid it down i measured my diagonals i got things squared up and i sunk post four and concreted it from there we had post two and three to do they were very simple again we basically leveled each one dumped concrete in the hole and got it down when all was said and done, we had four posts that were all exactly level and were all the correct distance apart from one another, which is exactly what we were looking for. Once the concrete had set up, we took those scrap pieces of two by four off. And at that point, we attached the permanent two by sixes here that actually take the brunt of the weight. 
Now, the nice thing is all the rest of the two by sixes are with respect to this original four posts and four two by six layout. So it was very easy to then mock up the rest of this system and add the other elements to it because we had a square level plum uh, really everything good starting point that we were then able to take off from there. So I think it was use, just useful mentioning this again. We tried a lot of different variations. It took about a day actually to do this layout because I kind of didn't know what I was doing. Um, and then from these, obviously, then we went on to post five, six, seven, and eight in any order, really. This doesn't order doesn't matter too much because we've got that level plum starting place. Hey, everyone. Here we are on the morning of day three. Wanted to give you guys a little progress update. So... Um, basically all day yesterday was just spent adding to the foundation that we already talked about. So we talked about the excavation, we talked about laying the initial posts and getting those set to the right level, height, set thing. Once that's done, once you have four posts that are level and plumb, it's extremely easy and work can really move a lot faster because everything is will be as good as those initial four posts level and plumbness is. So basically, like we talked about in the design video, uh, the whole basis of this observatory's design is those two two by six beams running from the four posts that we initially sunk in the second video. And as soon as we get those up, everything else is just an extension of those two beams, which is awesome. So we got those laid out, we bolted them in. I'm bolting all of my beams onto my four by fours with lag, uh, not, it might not be lag, but with bolts and nuts, galvanized bolts and nuts and washers, because I really want a solid connection there. Um, probably will have to tighten those over time as the wood dries out and shrinks a little bit we'll probably have to tighten those up but it's definitely going to be a more secure connection than just using a number of screws so like I said before these two beams are our main beams and they run from this 4x4 to this 4x4 and that's really what takes the most of the weight in this whole layout everything is attached to these two beams this entire exterior skirting is just purely cosmetic for the most part. Um, it's really not meant to take the structure of the load. As we can know, the observatory itself is gonna be resting on these four by fours and on this uh, beam running across this way. And I say beam, I just mean two by six. It's more just the structuralness of the whole observatory is built around these two things being strong. Now, like I said before, what we're gonna be doing is running some bolts through these, this beam into these four by fours just to keep them strong. And we're also gonna run some bolts through these auxiliaries right here and into this four by four. Let me show you guys. So this right here is a galvanized 5 16 by six inch long bolt. We're gonna run this through two of them per uh, four by four through the whole four x four and the beam itself. And then we're gonna put a washer on both ends and a nut on the end of that. And that's gonna hold the whole thing solid and make sure that all the weight is distributed from the beams and from the two by sixes into the four by fours. Now, wherever we're not using bolt and nut, we're using these really nice decking screws. These are exterior rated three and a half inch long decking screws. Um, and they come in the same color as your treated wood. So they sink in there really nice. They don't really show up that much and it looks super clean. So the rest of the day today is basically just going to be fabricating and laying out the missing pieces of this deck. We need to add some uh, kind of middle support so that we have something to screw the plywood top into. Because um, right now we don't have like a middle piece to screw that into. We also have to build some bracing around where the pier will be to further support the center of the structure. But basically the whole rest of this, once you get that initial layout of those four level posts, everything else kind of falls together. Um, it's really one of those magical things where if you start with a level foundation and a level structure to begin with, everything else becomes level just by nature of it. Um, obviously, check it as you go, but that's kind of the cool part about it. Good morning, everybody. We are here on the, I think it's the morning of the fifth day of building this thing. Um, the big thing yesterday was the pier. You guys can see the pier is poured behind me. It's been setting for about 18 hours or so at this point. Um, firming up pretty nice. Was able to get it perfectly plumb, perfectly level. Um, it ended up being about 14 bags of 60 pound concrete to get from the base of the footer all the way to the top of the Sono tube, um, which was a lot, a lot long day yesterday. Um, a lot of things to think about with the pier because you guys can learn more about this process in my actual other observatory build uh, video on the pier itself. But there's a lot of pier related things. 
The first of which is you just got to make sure that your hole is deep enough and that your pier is tall enough. It's the correct height, especially with a dome and obviously a roll off roof. You don't want to make your pier too short because then you're not gonna be able to see over the walls adequately. Um, so pier height is important. Also thinking about ways to, you know, you gotta remember you're trying to pour this all in one sequence so that the concrete stays wet and it adheres between the different layers of bags that you're putting into it. So you kinda wanna think through everything ahead of time, meaning having a level out there with you to level the sono tube, um, having a, a bubble level if you can to, to level the pier top plate, building a template for your pier top plate, having the J bolts, um, having it properly supported with two by fours in two different places, making sure it's in the center of the building. Right? There's just tons of things on and on and on and on. And the big thing that I recommend doing if you're gonna pour a pier is to kind of walk through the whole sequence in your head ahead of time and be like, okay, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this, and have all your tools laid out to do that. Um, I talked a little bit about pouring concrete in another video. Um, I do recommend having your concrete be a little bit more watery than what the bag recommends. Now, there's a couple caveats here. Got to remember concrete, the, the recommendation of water to premix concrete is there to maximize the structural rigidity of the concrete. So if you're pouring a slab for a sidewalk or something like that, you're going to want to follow exactly the water guidelines because that's going to give you the proper and strongest concrete. So you got to remember the wetter your concrete is, the less strong it's going to be. The thing is, we're not putting much load on these piers, and one of the big advantages you get through having a little bit wetter concrete is less voids in the concrete, things meld better, and you'll end up getting a smoother looking pier throughout that. Now, to a certain point, you don't want like soup, but having a little bit more concrete. So I think for a 60 pound bag, they recommend like two and a half quarts of water. I was doing more like 2.75 to three quarts of water. So a little bit extra water, a little bit more watery. Again, you're losing structure for sure. Also, your concrete can turn out a little bit more powdery on the outside, having a little bit too much liquid in there, but you're limiting the number of voids you're gonna have in the concrete and the difficulty of aerating the concrete and agitating the concrete to minimize those voids. Um, so, a little bit of a tidbit there. I prefer a little bit waterier, waterier of concrete because of the low load that we're putting on this. Also, if you hear noises in the background, it's the cows. There's cows back there grazing. They're stepping on the, the old dried up arrow leaf balsam root. Um, anyway. That's kind of a little bit on the pier. So have everything out ahead of time. Try to think through the whole process. Um, and from there, it's relatively simple. You just wanna make sure it's properly supported. You wanna just kind of think through the whole thing. It's a lot of weight of concrete. So make sure it's all there. Um, as for recommendations for, for your forms, most people say take the forms off the next day. Um, let it set up for a good day without the forms being removed. And then also you can peel off the Sono tube if you choose uh, within about 24 hours or well, around about 24 hours as well. So I'm gonna be working this morning on kind of finishing the deck framing the substructure um, while I wait for this to settle up and then right about the 24 hour mark I'm going to take those forms off and I'll probably leave the sono tube on until tomorrow um, just for a little bit of extra rigidity it just makes me feel better it's always scary when you take the sono tube off because you feel like the concrete's going to be wet in there it's just going to fly out um, that is one other thing I should say uh, when you are pouring your concrete, if it's a little bit waterier, you gotta remember that water is gonna settle down to the base of the Sono tube. So you're gonna have a little bit of a puddle down there. And that's kind of scary, because if you have too much liquid, you can blow out the Sono tube. So you know, it's a very fine line. And this is one of those things where it's like, uh, the more you do concrete, the more you learn, and the more you see how this works. Um, follow the recommendation, maybe go a little bit more watery if you want a little bit fewer voids, but it doesn't matter too much. Luckily, we're not putting much structure on it. All right, so what's the plan for the day? Plan for the day is really three main things. We'll see if I get to all three. I probably won't, but I'm gonna try my best. The first thing is I have some substructure framing with some two by sixes that I wanna complete. I left a lot of the cross members out of my frame so far um, because I wanted easy access to the pier hole to dump and shovel concrete down there. So I didn't fill in all these little bits. So I gotta go cut some two by six treated wood and screw it in this deck frame to kind of complete that substructure. That's thing number one. That shouldn't take too long. It's just some cutting and some screwing. Second thing that I wanna do is run conduit. So I'm gonna make sure I already have my main two inch conduit popping up here. Let me move you guys over so you can see that. Um, there we are right there. So you guys can see there's my, here's my two inch conduit coming up. Um, and that's gonna be the two inch conduit that goes all the way to the house. That's the 500 foot run to the house. So this is gonna pop up through the floor and the electrician's gonna connect that to the panel. Um, let me move you back here. 
but in addition to that, I also need to run conduit from where the panel is going to be to the different places in the observatory. So I have five conduit runs planned, um, two for data, three for electric. Uh, so I'm going to run electric to the two other walls in the observatory, the north wall and the east wall. And then I'm also going to run uh, electric to the pier. And then I'm going to run data wires to the east wall and to the pier as well. So the pier will have power and data, and then the walls will, uh, a couple of them will have power, one of them will have data. So just trying to think this through. Obviously, I built this deck elevated off the ground enough that I can add electrical conduit later on if I need to. So if I see a need, I could definitely do it. But my goal was to kind of get all this done ahead of time so I don't have to be crawling under there adding stuff because it's so much easier to add it right now when the deck's not on. So that's thing number two. Thing number three, goal for the day, is to add the deck, um, which is three quarter inch ground contact rated plywood. Um, and that's gonna be the final thing that I put on here to kind of seal it, close it all up. Um, and at that point, we'll be ready to build the next dome on top of it, which I think will be the easiest part of this whole process, right? We're five days in right now just to build the deck. From what I've read online, that next dome should be about a day, uh, which is awesome. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and dive in. 